All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, the messenger of Allah is an excellent model for those of you who put hope in Allah and the last day and remember him often. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master prophet Muhammad is his father and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the day of judgment. Allah has sent his prophet Muhammad to guide people and lead them to the truth and call them to the path of Allah. His message is the final divine message that suits all times and places. Therefore, it was necessary that the Prophet, peace be upon him, be a practical example of true Islam in all of his sayings, actions, and affairs. This should not be a wonder, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, adhered always to the approach of the Quran in his relation with his Lord and with all people of, of different races, colors, and beliefs. When Aisha was asked about the character of the Prophet, peace be upon him, she answered, his character was the Quran. <clears throat> Reviewing the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, one finds that he was the best example in all his sayings, actions, and affairs. This includes, for example, his truthfulness and honesty. His life was all about truthfulness and honesty that he was called the truthful and honest one before his mission. Therefore, poet Ahmad Shawqi wrote, you nicknamed him the trustworthy one of the tribe in his youth. And the speech of the trustworthy man must be taken always as truth. When Heraclius, the king of Romans, called Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, which was before the latter's conversion to Islam, to ask him about the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. It was a lengthy dialogue in which Heraclius asked Abu Sufyan, did you accuse him of falsehood before he proclaimed his prophethood? Abu Sufyan said, no. Heraclius asked it again, has he ever violated his covenant? Abu Sufyan said, no. But we have recently concluded a peace treaty with him for a period of time and we do not know what he is going to do about it. Abu Sufyan remarked, I could not accuse the Prophet of anything more than these words. The honesty of the Prophet came to be very clear on the night of his immigration. <coughs> when he asked Ali ibn Abi Talib to stay at Mecca in order to return back all deposits to their owners, who were in fact his enemies, though they tortured him and his companions severely. This was because a Muslim is not allowed to be treacherous, even with his enemies, as the Almighty Allah says, and if you learn of treachery on the part of any of the people, through their treaty back at them, for Allah does not love the treacherous. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, pay the deposit to him who deposited it with you and do not betray him who betrays you. <clears throat> the loyalty of the Prophet. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was the most loyal person. He has never dealt with ingratitude with any person and was thankful to all those who did him favors. Once before his death, he remarked, there is no favor due upon me from anyone except that we have repaid him, with the exception of Abu Bakr, Verily upon us there is a favor due to him, which Allah will repay him on the day of judgment. Among the manifestations of his gratefulness was his conduct with his wife, the mother, the mother of the believers, Khadija. She remained loyal and thankful. He remained loyal and thankful, thankful to her during her life and after her death. Revealing her virtues, he said, Allah did not give me a better wife than her. She believed in me when the whole world refuted me, and she attests to my truthful, truthfulness when the whole world accused me of falsehood. She offered me a compassion and loyalty with her wealth when everyone else had forsaken me, and Allah blessed me with children through her and not through any other wife. Once Aisha said, I did not feel jealous of any of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as much as as I did of Khadija, 
though I did not see her. But the Prophet used to mention her very often. And whenever he slaughtered a sheep, he would cut its parts and send them to the female friends of Khadija. Another aspect of his loyalty with is with non-Muslims. In the Battle of Badr, the Prophet peace be upon him said, if Al-Mutam ibn Adi had been alive and spoken to me about these captives, I would have released them for his sake. Al-Mutam ibn Adi had done a favor to the Prophet when he offered him a protection after the Prophet's return from a Ta'if journey. Another aspect of his loyalty is his loyalty with his enemies in times of war. It has been reported on the authority of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman who said, nothing prevented me from being present at the Battle of Badr except, the, except this incident. I came out with my father to participate in the battle, but we were caught by the disbelievers of Christ. They said, do you intend to go to Muhammad? We said, we do not intend to go to, go to him, but we wish to go back to Medina. So they took from us a covenant in the name of God that we would turn back to Medina and would not fight on the side of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we came to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, and re related the, this incident to him. He said, both of you proceed to Medina. We will fulfill the covenant made with them and seek God's help against them. Similarly, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a unique example and a role model in dealing with his wives as he peace be upon him kindly treated them and their life was overwhelmed by serenity affection mercy modesty and leniency the prophet peace be upon him was never arrogant when dealing with them rather he treated all of them kindly in doing so the prophet peace be upon him drew on the sayings of allah the almighty and kindly treated them and and of his signs is that he created for you from your souls mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy indeed in that are signs for the people who give thought the prophet peace be upon him was kind was a kind husband who used to use gentle language with his wives in a scene full of mercy the prophet peace be upon him wiped the tears of his wife the mother of the believers Safiya. may allah be pleased with her the Prophet, peace be upon him, wiped her face with his blessed hands and made her calm down. Narrating this incident, Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Safiya accompanied the Prophet, peace be upon him, one day since it was her assigned day. Yet she came late. The Messenger of Allah met her while she was weeping, saying, You carried me on a camel that slowly moves which is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, wiped her face with his hands and made her calm down. <clears throat> in the same way, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a role model in dealing with his children and grandchildren. What a great father he is. He used to shower all of his children and grandchildren with, sorts, with all sorts of love, affection, and mercy. In this connection, Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, kissed Al-Hasan ibn Ali in the presence of Al-Aqra ibn Habiz. And the latter said, I have ten children, but I never kissed any one of them. Whereupon Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, He who does not show mercy towards his children, no mercy will be shown to him. Yet we stress that <coughs> this mercy was not restricted to the Prophet's children or grandchildren only. Rather, it was a way of life of the Prophet. Usama ibn Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated <coughs> that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to take him and Al-Hasan and used to say, Oh Allah, I love them, so please love them, or said something similar. Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, is further reported to have said, I served with the messenger of Allah for 10 years, and he never said, of that's an expression of disgust to me. He never said, why did you that for something I had done, nor did he ever say, why did you not do such and such for something I hadn't done? 
In the due course, the Prophet peace be upon him was a role model to be followed in dealing with his companions. He used to share with them their happy times and hard ones, to ask Allah, to ask about the absent, to visit the sick, to care about their affairs, and to seriously consider their feelings in all affairs of life. Simak ibn Harb, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, <coughs> I said to Jabir ibn Samura, did you have the privilege of sitting in the company of Allah's messenger, peace be upon him? He said, yes, very frequently, and added, he did not stand up and go from one place where he offered the dawn prayer until the sun rose. And after the rising of the sun, he stood up and his companions entered into conversation with one another. And they talked of the things that they did during the days of ignorance. And they laughed at their unreasonable and ridiculous acts. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, smiled only. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <coughs> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is his father and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever follow their path to the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, Prophet Muhammad was a practical model representing the correct Islam a point which is clear in his humane views as well as his morals. He was all also a role model in his moderation. He who carefully examines the rulings of the Sharia will for sure spot his moderation in all fields. In this regard, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reported, never did Allah's messenger make a choice between two things but adopted the easier one as compared to the difficult one. But his choice for the easier one was only in case it did, not, it did not involve any sin. But if it involved sin, he was the one who was the farthest from it among the people. For the sake of keeping this moderation, the Prophet peace be upon him warned all against the phenomenon of extremism, especially extremism in religion. So, the Prophet peace be upon him did not accept the act of his of some of his companions who used to be extremists in their worship in a way that keeps them away from the limits of moderation. The Prophet peace be upon him said, "All people, beware of exaggeration in religious matters. For those who come before you were." doomed because of exaggeration in religious matters. Indeed, we are in a dire need to follow the example of the messenger, peace be upon him, uh, his guidance and teachings to spread the message of light as pure as sent down by Allah to the entire creation, with leniency, kindness, mercy, and bringing hearts together. That's because the message of Islam is all just, all merciful, all tolerant, and all beneficial. O oh Allah, grant us your love, the love of your Prophet, and the love of every deed that draws us closer to you. O oh Allah, make Egypt our country and all world's countries safe and secure. <laughs>